Hello. In this Alice 3 tutorial, we're going to learn about how to move individual body parts in a character. So let's start by going to Set Up Scene. We're going to choose an object in the Biped class. So I'm going to scroll over to my Ice Skater. I'm going to put my Ice Skater right here. Hit OK. Then I'm going to go down to Edit Code. Now let's go to the drop down. So you can see this Ice Skater, we have a right pointing arrow. And this allows us to access individual body parts. So we're going to scroll down and see a few more. Then we see this other menu, other S biped joints, and we have even more. We're going to start by writing some code to have the ice skater raise her arm. Now there's two important things to know when moving individual body parts in Alice 3. The first is the joints in the models don't always correspond to the joints in a human body. So you have to do some guessing and checking. Second, Joints will always move in relation to where they are at a given point. So if you move a joint to a different position, then its relative position is different, so then the later movements may be different. And we'll see how that works in just a minute. We want to get the left shoulder. So we're going to go to Ice Skater, Get Left Shoulder. And then we see our options. Generally, we don't want to use move when we're dealing with individual body parts because that will actually cause the body to stretch out. So we're going to use turn and roll in this case. So first we're going to have her turn. So we're going to grab ice skater, get left shoulder, turn. And we want to have it turn right. And we want her to lift up her arm a quarter turn, so we're going to say 0.25. So let's run this and see how it works. So there we go. She lifts it up. Now let's do the same thing with the other arm. So we're going to go to drop down here, again Ice Skater. In this case, we're going to get right shoulder. The left shoulder we had turn right. However, the right shoulder is the mirror image. So it's facing the opposite direction. So we're going to have it turn left. So we're going to grab turn left and have it turn left 0.25. So the left shoulder turns right, the right shoulder turns left. And you have to do some practice, but pretty soon you'll have a good feel for what does what. So let's run it. She, she lifts her left arm and then her right arm. Next, we're going to learn how to make her turn her palm facing upwards. So in this case, we're going to use the shoulder again. So we're going to go here to get her left shoulder. and we're going to have her roll. So we have her lift up her arm and then we're going to have it roll. In this case we're going to have it roll left a quarter turn. So when we run it she lifts up her arm and then turns her palm facing upwards. Now I mentioned earlier when we have a body part move then it's taking its position relative to its new location and we're going to see why this matters. So here what we did is we had it turn first and roll second and it ended up like this. But let's reverse the order. Let's have it roll first and turn second. And let's run it. And then we see what happens is it moved up parallel instead of moving upwards in front of her. And that's because when we had it roll left, that changed the position of its body part. So when it turned right, its right was now in a different direction. And again, these are just things you have to play with to get used to. Okay, let's close this out. Next thing we want to do is we want to have her lift up her leg. So we're going to go drop down here. We're going to go to Ice Skater. Again, we're going to hit this right pointing arrow. And we want to get her left hip. So let's find left hip. Right hip, left hip. OK, and then we're going to have it turn. Now in this case, we have it turn backwards. Because again, it's from its own perspective. So we're going to have it turn backwards an eighth of a turn. Because we don't want her lifting it up like all the way to a 90 degree angle. So we'll say 0.25. There we go, we say run. And there she did, she lifted up her leg. So let's close this out. Let's say we want to get her back to her original position. There's two ways we can do it. First, we could do all of this code in the reverse order, or we could just use the command straighten out joints. So we're going to drop down, and we're not going to select a body part, we're going to select the ice skater as a whole. And we're going to go down to the bottom of procedures, and we're going to see straighten out joints. So we're going to put this right at the bottom, and then we're going to run it and see her straighten out her joints. And there we go, right back to where she was.
Next what we're going to do is we're going to add an animal from a different top level class. Let's go to set up scene. Let's go to all classes. We're going to pick something from a flyer class. So here we go. We're going to grab an eagle. Put our eagle right here. Hit OK. Go to edit code. And let's look at the eagle. Now the eagle has some special features built in. Fold wings, spread wings. So here, instead of playing around with the movement of the individual wings, we can grab spread wings and then fold wings. And it's got a whole sequence of movements built into these methods that will fold and spread them for us. So let's run it and see what happens. So we have our ice skater first doing our thing. And we have our eagle spreading his wings and folding his wings. We're going to look at one final type of object. So we're going to go to set up scene. We're going to go to all classes, and we're going to look at prop classes. Now, prop classes, they may look sophisticated, but in the ways they're modeled with joints, they're simpler. So let's grab this Adelaide bust. Okay, let's go to edit code. We drop down here, and we can see there's much less here in it. So we can move the neck and the lower lip and so on, but we don't have quite all the articulating joints we did with the other two characters. And then let's go back to set up scene. Let's grab something like an ancient temple arch. Okay. And we drop down here, and you can see there's no subparts to this. So it's just one solid modeled object. So now you've seen how you can access and move individual body parts, and you can create some pretty sophisticated movements using these characters. To see the next video in this curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.